guys, I'm sorry. What Jake wants, Jake gets. You're mine, aren't you? I'd love to come to a And I would love to see you come to a And of course, his scene, and it's incredible. Right? Not much call for Australian actors over there. I've been waiting around. I have got stuff to do, you know. I just got off with that job again. Which job? The one in London doing kids' facial reconstruction. Alex, it's a great opportunity. I'm not going to go without you. Eden, I I'm being sent there to help you become president of the College of Surgeons. I've spoken to Dr. Devesh and the Eden Hope issue has been resolved. Dear Rex, good to hear from you. Just a quick note. Yes, can definitely get you some locum work. Start making plans! Say you love me. So poor. And I'm rich. And unhappy. And a cliche. Is it better to be rich or poor? Rich? But you're unhappy. Yeah, but the money didn't make me unhappy. But I'm poor and unhappy. So I was happy when I was rich. I think money did make me happy. Your shout? Yeah. <laughs> What do you need to have good quality of life? From my own experience, money isn't essential, but some things must be. What are the essential ingredients of a good life? How you feeling, Ferg? No good. You been playing much soccer out bush? It's all right, mate. We'll get you playing again. Me, Beckham. You are. Hey, let's have a look at your veins, little fella. That's a sore one, isn't it? How are you feeling? He's got a bit of a rash here. With his feeding problems, he's very sick. He's dying. My fear is his pneumonia will worsen, and once we put him on a ventilator, we'll never be able to wean him off it. We'll just be postponing his inevitable death. He wants to live. It might not look like he's got much quality of life, but to him, that's OK. That's all he's got. If we don't ventilate him, he'll die. Isn't it better to be on a ventilator than to be dead? No, I, I don't think so. <laughs> Looking at the state of his veins and his lungs, I would feel very concerned if we committed him to weeks or even months on a ventilator. Alex? Um, I think when it's time for him to go, we should let him go. OK. Have a talk to the parents. If Fergus's condition worsens, we believe he should not be put on a ventilator. But make sure they understand that the final decision rests with them. If they want him ventilated, he will be. Can quality of life be relative? What would be hell to me might be fine to someone else, because that's all they know. But who decides? Who should be the quality controller when it comes to life? Mrs. Watson, you know Fergus has been bicker. He's been sick for a long time now. And since I've known him, 
This is the sickest he's been. Well, his lungs are not working very well at all. He's finding it very difficult to breathe. Now, there's a machine that can help you breathe. But if we put Fergus on that machine, he's going to have to stay on it until he passes away. And it's not a very nice way to live. So we reckon he shouldn't go on the machine. What will happen to him? If the pneumonia is really bad, he might pass away. But it might be better to let him go. You have to think about it. If you would like him to go on the machine, then that's what we'll do. If it comes to that. And it might not. I want you to get well. So you're going to have to use all your energy to make yourself strong. And if you do that, I've got something special for you. Something very special. So you just wake up and find out what it is, OK? Richie's quality of life was at an all-time low, and it wasn't just because he wasn't working. It was because he had been working and now wasn't. He tasted what it was like to be a working actor, and now, without that, his life seemed pointless. All right. Thought I heard something. Yeah, whatever. I think saying whatever to someone's really quite sophisticated, because it can be both dismissive and insulting. What? What is wrong with you? Don't be rude to me. I don't act like my mother. Then stop acting like a child. And don't just stop talking. When I talk, you say I'm like a child, so I stop. Then you're pissed off because I've stopped talking. What do you want, mate? Good night. Yeah, good night. If you want to leave, just walk away. Well, for me, you need three things. Good job, good home, good relationship. Isn't that what everyone wants? No. Some people live a nomadic life. Good home doesn't matter to them. When I worked out, Bush, happiness was based on three things. Family, family, family. Mm. Speaking personally, I think a good job is important to me, but I don't think money's essential. <laughs> Only someone with money would say that. What do you mean? It's only the middle class who want to celebrate poverty. If you actually are poor, you definitely don't want to be. I think you need some money, but I don't think your happiness increases as your salary does. So what else do you need? I just reckon you shouldn't think about what you need. You should think about what other people need. This whole idea of being happy is indulgent. Most of the world are just trying to stay alive while you lot sit around and stare at your navels. What are you talking about? Are you suddenly the spokesperson for the underclasses? No, I just think you're going on about stuff you know nothing about. You live your perfect cloistered little life here and talk about what makes you happy. Cloistered? <laughs> I come into contact with disease and mental illness and poverty every day. I work in the public hospital system, for God's sake. Anyway, I'm more interested in how you determine quality of life. I think we should talk about something else. Yeah, why don't we talk about furniture or stock market? Isn't that what middle class gits talk about all the time? It wasn't our most successful dinner. Kelly looked mortified, but Jake seemed almost pleased with himself. Rex and I are having farewell drinks on the rooftop this Saturday. Can you guys make it? Wouldn't miss it. I can't come. I'm going away with Jake for the weekend. Well, do you think there's any way you could change it? I don't think so. It's because it's Jake's last free weekend and he's got training for the next four months. Oh, but I don't want you to miss it. Well, I'll talk to Jake, but I think he's already got somewhere booked. Just don't go. Stay in town. Come on. It's a party. Stop hassling me about it. Okay. 
You want some toast? Yeah, thanks. Got anything on today? No, nothing. Like yesterday and the day before. I was a dickhead last night, sorry. It's cool. I'm just stressed about work and money and everything. You got any money? Uh, not much. I don't want to go in the dole. Do a shift for me at the bar tonight. I'll cover your rent. Simon, you are the nicest person in Australia. Don't limit yourself to this continent. How are you, Ferg? Where's my special present? Did you hear me say that? Where is it? When you were asleep, did you hear me say that? You better give it to me. Here you are. Beckham. Wow. He looks better. Much better. How was Fergus today? Much improved. You know, I think he might surprise us all. He hasn't got long. He's still dying. Last time I operated on him, his tissues were so fragile, he just took forever to heal. He was so malnourished. He's even more malnourished now. I still have hope. Good. So, what's the plan? Um, bar over here somewhere, then lights, lights, lights everywhere, and stereo, and that's floor. <laughs> have you got a plan about where you're going to live in London yet? Oh, uh, at the hospital. Then we'll find our own flat. Oh, it's exciting, isn't it? Yes. I wish it was me. Good things are going to happen to you. How do you know? Oh, life's not random. You can make things happen. You always have. Do you think I can make someone fall madly in love with me? Whisk me away and make me happy? Hey, Kel. Hi. We're planning the party. Oh, Kel can't make it. Jake wants to go away. It's not just Jake. We both want to get away. Can't you change it? You've got to be here. It's the end of an era. It's just we don't get many chances to get away. So what do you think of Jake? Bit of a dickhead. <laughs> That's clear. <laughs> Hi. Hi. This is for you. Ooh. It's my assessments. Oh, my God. Dr Vander. Technical skills, excellent. Anticipates the needs of the operator, five out of five. Mm -hmm. Acceptance of criticism, satisfactory, three out of five. Use of investigation, excellent, five out of five. Recommendations, trainees should continue in training program. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> this one's from Dr. Devesh. He's even writing a report on me, he's never even operated with me. Technical skills, follows the operation with guidance from the operator, three out of five. Acceptance of criticism, poor. Responds poorly to criticism, angry, turns off one out of five. Use of investigation, poor ability to select appropriate procedure, two out of five. Recommendations, continued position and training program in doubt due to identified deficiencies. I see that. They always get you in the end. My concerns are twofold. One, it seems suspicious to me that I can have two reports that are so completely different. Uh, one of them is obviously inaccurate. Keeping that in mind, I believe that the inaccurate report is the one by Dr. Devesh. He has only ever observed me operating. He's never operated with me. He's never seen me interpret tests. Dr. Vander, on the other hand, um, I've worked with him for the past four months. I've assisted him many times, and he's allowed me a great deal of responsibility. I believe his assessment is the accurate one, and Dr. Devesh's is completely inaccurate. So you've never operated with Dr. Devesh? No, I've never operated with him at all. 
Well, it does sound as if he's in no position to be assessing you. No, I don't believe he is. I've also brought along my previous assessments. Um, I've only ever received satisfactory and above. My last assessment, I got consistently excellent. Five out of five in almost every assessment area. six months. What? What did they say? Oh, they seem sympathetic, but that's the solution they came up with. Yeah, and what about the fact that he's the only person that's given you a bad report? I mean, doesn't that make them think that, you know, maybe there's something wrong with him? Well, they know that there's something wrong with him, but they can't get rid of him. So they have to be seen to be supporting him. Yeah. But so does this mean you're not going to go to England? No, they just add six months on to the end. I, um, I made you up this CD to take with you. I was going to give it to you at the party, but maybe you should have it now. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful, thanks. Oh, I miss you. <laughs> Through to 4616, please. The central line's infected. It'll have to be replaced. There's no other way of feeding him. Well, that's not going to be easy. It was difficult finding the vein it's in now. Before we take out the line, we'll have to give him a big dose of antibiotics. And you'll have to check with Micro to see what he grew most recently. I'll ring them. How are you, little man? Mm -hmm. Sweet, tidy. First two veins I found were completely clotted. And then it took two hours to find another one. But the line's in and working. Well, yeah, for now. I hear that could be a good one to put in. Vote to Jake. He said he can't get away any other weekend. So you won't come to the party? It's not that I won't come, it's just that I can't. Well, you can, but you're just not going to. No, I can't. You can. You, you, could, you can come, you could just not go away, but the fact is, you've decided to go. Fine. Remember those CDs we made up for that party when Kel first moved in? Where are they? I haven't seen them in ages. Kel, have you got the dance CDs from your party? I let them to Jake. Oh, everything's about Jake. Well, do you think you could get him back for Alex's party? No, don't worry about it. I'll get him, that's fine. No, don't worry about it, I'll make some more up. I'll get him. No, don't worry about it, forget it. I'll get him, okay? Look, if you can't be bothered coming to the party, I'm not interested in your stupid bloody CDs. Okay. Hey, Alex. Call me intuitive, but I'm sensing some tension between you two. Let's talk about the music. I want some. Gentle introductory music, and then I want some party starters, and then some full on dance music, and then some you know, romantic songs. All right, leave it with me. Is it BYA? Uh, no, we're putting it on. <laughs> Great! <laughs> <laughs> Why does free alcohol excite you so much? No, I don't know, man. It just gets me going. I go! Uh, 
spring segment, right? <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Fergus, it's tidy. Fergus? When we changed the line, he must have got a septic shower. So we just dose him up with antibiotics? Hit him with some imipenem and hope it subsides. Okay. Um, I've talked to my family and my uncle. He wants to talk with you. Okay. Hello? Hello, it's Dr. Patrick. Can I speak with Wally, please? Toddy answered all the questions from Fergie's family. Hello, this is Dr. Patrick. They talked and talked and talked yes. and always came back to the same problem. What should they do when Fergie, the boy in the photo, had no chance of coming back? I'm going to the hairdresser. I just wanted to remind you to um, organise a stereo for the rooftop. I already got your note. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> I can't believe you typed it. <laughs> well, I want everything to be perfect. You wanted to make the note perfect. No, I want the day to be... Mm, shut up. I'll be back in two hours. OK. Hi. Hi. I just dropped in to make sure you're right for tonight. And, um, I brought you some of these just in case you want to put them in your hair for the party. Thanks. I'm off to the hairdresser, so... <laughs> I'm going to get going. See ya. Um, I'm just dropping in to remind you to meet the delivery people at 10. I won't forget. I got your note. <laughs> Do you need an extra pair of hands? Yeah, that'd be great. No worries. OK. See ya. See ya. See ya. I hope tonight's perfect. Thanks. Will you be back in time for the party? You bet. Good. See ya. Want to choose the CD? Uh, you choose, I don't mind. Dear Alex, I'm sorry that I've been behaving weirdly. I suppose I just don't want you to go. It's selfish of me, but you've meant so much to me. You've been an inspiration and a guide, and I don't know what I'll do without you. I wish you a wonderful, glamorous, successful, beautiful future in England. 
Love, 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 Kel. Is it love the strangest feeling the way it comes and goes? Fall into the arms of comfort and watch it turn so cold. We watch it turn so cold. You all right? Yep. What's wrong? I just feel sad. Why? I don't know. But of course I did. You always know. I was worried about arguments I'd had with Alex and that we hadn't made up and that when I'd be back, she'd be gone. Where do you want the stereo set up? Over there. Okay. should be closer together. Maybe you should do it, darling. <sighs> OK, I just want it to be perfect. No, you just want it your way. <laughs> <laughs> Got any preferences where you want the bar set up? Um, not really. Oh, how about I just plonk it up against the yeah. wall, eh? I'm going to leave the fairy lights to the blokes. Just stack them over there, mate. We'll set them up. Thanks. I'm gonna go make myself beautiful. Okay. Some flowers for your hair. Oh, thanks. That's me. Luciana did it for me. Have you had sex with her? No. She just likes me. Be careful. Of what? Someone who gets me work and invites me to lavish parties? Oh, I'll zip my lips. Good. Let's go. I forgot the glasses. <laughs> Thanks for offering, but I'm not really interested in your bacteria. Oh, more for me. It's fantastic, doesn't it? Thank you. Thanks. Didn't realise it was going to be so perfect. Cheers. Cheers. How you doing? Great. Excited. Yeah? Do everything, have an adventure. Thank you. Any chance we might see you over there for a visit? Oh, I don't think so. I wanted to say that I always enjoyed our time together. Really? Why? Um, because at the time I was very sad and you made me happy. I'm glad. Have, have you two actually met? Um, Christian Rex? <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. Are you responsible for the party? Yeah, it's like a... Have you guys seen Evan? No, I haven't seen him once. 
Me neither. Which is weird because it's free alcohol here. <laughs> hmm. I might go and get changed now. Okay. The top looks good on you. Thanks. Sometimes. Sometimes what? Sometimes I think I'd like to hold your hand. Why do you think you feel that way? I don't know. Hold my hand. Yeah, yeah, I'm on my way. I just want to get this idea down. Can I tempt you? Mm. Of course. <laughs> we'll toast you, Trip. No, let's toast you and me. And all we've been through together. Okay. I'm going to miss you so much. Mm. Ah, but it's not forever. I just want you to know how much I've enjoyed living with you. And, you know, it's everything. Anyway, everything. <laughs> so have I. And that was the last time for many years that Alex and I were alone together. I didn't know that then, though. Hi. You came back. I I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I couldn't bear to say goodbye to you, and then I couldn't bear not to say goodbye to you. Oh, I miss you so much, <laughs> both of you. I miss you. Oh, for God's sake, she'll be back in six months. You guys go up. I'm going to be back up there in a sec. wonderful event. Come in a bit closer if you'd like to. Today we are uniting two people already attuned to one another. Alex and Anthony, you are adding to your lives not only the affection of one another, but also the companionship and blessing of a deep trust as well. 
You are agreeing to share all things, your strengths, your weaknesses, your responsibilities, your disappointments, your achievements, and your friendship. But most importantly, you are agreeing to share your love. Alex, may I always need you. May you always need me. May my embrace always reflect the passion I feel for you today. May we have happiness, and may we find it in making one another happy. Rex, may I always speak to you with grace and care for you with compassion. May we always look for things to praise and overlook that which we cannot. <laughs> may we have love and may we find it in loving one another. Anthony Franco Mariani, do you take Alexandra Jane Christensen to be your lawful wedded wife, to love her, to care for her, and ride the waves of life with her forever? I do. And do you, Alexandra Jane Christensen, take this man to be your lawful wedded husband, to love him, to care for him, and ride the waves of life with him forever? I sure do. May I have the rings, please? It's the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> These rings, by their shape, are a symbol of the undying love that exists between you. The substance of which they are composed is a symbol of purity, which shall ever characterise the purity of your minds and hearts at this moment. Now when you drink you tell me all kinds of improbable things. The old house feels empty. You are now husband and wife. Step outside. I don't know this kid at all, mate. And there's a note on the chart that says to call you if he goes into respiratory failure. Well, he's there now. What are you going to do? Keep him comfortable. The chart says not to ventilate at his parents' request. Well, where's his mother? She's gone for something to eat. Ventilate him. That's not what the chart says. Ventilate him. I'll help. Hey, don't put me in this position. I'll do it. I just need a bit of help. OK, Fergie, we're going to send you off to sleep. And we're going to put a tube down your throat to help you breathe. It's going to be a bit uncomfortable, but it won't take a second. I'd like to sing a song to my new husband. <laughs> Fly me to the moon. Let me play among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. The world hold my hand <laughs> in other words. Baby, kiss me. Yes! Fill my heart with song and let me sing forevermore. 
made the decision to intubate him. I did. Listen, his parents made a decision. A very difficult decision that we asked them to make. You've disregarded their wishes. And if he can't be weaned off the ventilator, you've sentenced him to months of hell. I... Um, I just did it. Okay. It wasn't your decision to make, Patrick. Whether it was the antibiotics, tidy sheer force of will, or a straight out fair dinkum miracle, Fergus decided that life on a ventilator wasn't the right life for him. And he started to breathe for himself. the brilliant blue sky your heart's the brilliant blue sky going 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 maybe we should think about getting someone to move in She's this really cool sounding girl. Her name's Marnie. I love this room. It's 
So were you in love with Alex? Jesus. Frozen meals. Mm, they taste horrible. Ah, but do they? He's just an ad guy, Wenka. He's got all this frozen food in the freezer that he's researching. Does this mean I fail? Do I fail the subject? It's only your first essay, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Band aid still on? Yeah, thanks. What do you want to do? Well, to tell you the truth, I really want to kiss you. the brilliant